Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button and join the couch gang. So today we're gonna be going over some of the interior features of our 2022 Bronco Big Bend. And specifically, we're gonna be looking at the steering wheel, the infotainment cluster, the infotainment system uh, screen in the middle. And that's the main three areas we're gonna be looking at and talking about today. And then uh, let me know what you guys think and I'll be continuing the series on the Bronco. Every little thing we do, every little aspect of it, I'm going to cover in our series. So stay posted. All right guys, so let's talk a little bit about the steering wheel here. So I really like the steering wheel feel, like what the material feels like. It's really soft when you push on it, if you can see there. And it's a really good feel, especially when you're driving it and when you're just on long trips to have that comfortable steering wheel. So I really do like that. Another thing that I really like about this steering wheel is just the, the not just the size, because it's not too large, but also the buttons on this steering wheel. They're very smooth. And let's actually get a closer up on the buttons and setup right now. So if you can see here, the buttons are really smooth and when you press them, they don't make a lot of noise, which is really cool, especially if you're changing the volume and you're mashing on them, it's not making a lot of noise. And then another thing that I really like is this Bronco guy chilling right here, looks awesome. Uh, but you know, that's besides the point, <laughs> but these buttons are still amazing. All the, another thing about the buttons that I think is really cool is the fact that you have the volume here on the left side with your cruise control. So when you're going on those long trips or when you're driving, I'm typically adjusting the volume more than I am skipping music. So I like that they decided to do it this way, right? You put the volume here with the cruising. So you can cruise, turn up and down the volume, talk to your significant other or whoever, right, is in the car with you. And you never have to really like go to the other side to do anything. And then if you're just wanting to skip a song, you you can you know of course you know click those skip buttons there but when you're answering putting you know hanging up phone calls it's all in the same area when you're going through the menu here you can do it all here you don't have to go back and forth i really like how they set that up and of course the buttons feel amazing there so overall this steering wheel is pretty great i like it a lot so let's move on to the um, cluster here and talk a little bit about the features Okay, here's the cluster of the Bronco, right? So on the left side there, you have the speedometer and that is not digital. And on the right side, you have the digital portion, which is actually a pretty decently sized screen. I like the size of it. It's not too small, it's not too big, but I think it could have been maybe a little bit bigger just based on how far it is from the um, things on the bottom there and from what's on the uh, right side there. So I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger but um, I'm just here to show you guys the features of it. So uh, you'll always see on the left there, the speed and your RPMs, and as well as your gas gauge to see how much gas you have. On the bottom, you'll have your miles to empty, your trip, um, you know, mileage, sorry, your overall mileage to the right. Then what you have on the right side there is you see fuel economy, right? And you see that there's a discoloration between the left and right side, that's because the left side stays, the right side will change. So what you have here is if you hit the up and down buttons next to the okay, you can actually switch from fuel economy, your first trip, your average speed, you know, your tire pressure, um, and uh, sorry, this is uh, your actual off-road and what your tires are doing and, and angles. Um, and then you have the tire pressure and then your different gauges for uh, your battery, your, um, you know, temperatures there and your uh, PSI. I think that's for the turbo. I'm just, I'm guessing there. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not, I'm just guessing that's what that's for, but uh, it might be for something else. Yeah, no, it's definitely a turbo image. So that's what that is. Uh, and then you have your CarPlay here, what's playing, and um, you then can configure uh, to add or remove screens to this up and down if you wanna do that. Then you have trip and fuel which is your fuel economy, your first, second trip, your average speed, and then your auto start stop status, 
which is just, you know, when your car shuts off at uh, when it stops and then turns back on when you hit the accelerator, let off the brake again. You have your off-road uh, functionalities here. Um, you can click through these and it'll give you actually a bunch of information that I think is super useful and that can also be found in that initial screen uh, right here. You can just scroll down like I showed you before to the different information, which is actually really cool. And if we go back there, then you can go to navigation, phone, and look at any options that you would like to change from there, or any, uh, anything you, you need without taking your eyes off the center you know, in front of you, right? So it's easy to access all these things. And the actually really nice thing about all this is when you're like, even using Apple CarPlay or anything like that, on this side here on the, where it says fuel economy, it'll actually show, um, you know, where you're going or the, uh, the next direction to take. And um, it'll do everything like that. And it's actually really cool. So you don't have to look to your right to look at what your next thing is. You can just look, oh, in the center, it's saying in three miles, I'm gonna turn right. So I can probably show you guys that eventually when I'm doing a driving review, but for now, I, I'm not gonna be showing you guys that. But that's just like the basic information here of the center cluster on the Bronco. All right, so now let's talk about the inner infotainment system here in the center. So right now we're on the home screen, which you can easily reach at any point in time by clicking the little home icon here on the top left. Here you have the temperature of the driver's side. This has dual climate control. On the right side there, that's the passenger side temperature there. If you can see those two. Then you have the time up here currently. Um, and then you will have like your information for the Wi-Fi connection and different information up here, as well as the outside temperature here on the right. This home screen will show you your navigation as well as anything that's going on with your audio or what song you're playing and what can, what phone it's currently connected to for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or just Bluetooth. So now here we have the audio option. This will take you to this screen with then you can select what uh, different audio you wanna listen to. Pretty straightforward. And you can go back here to go back to your home screen. Then you have your Apple CarPlay if you're connected, otherwise that will not be there. Um, you can click on that and it will take you to our Apple screen here, which of course we're all familiar with or Android Auto. And if you're not, it's pretty simple. It's just like your phone. You scroll left, right, you select what you wanna play. You could go to any of these uh, different things by clicking on them, or you can have like that the Apple home screen or whatnot. So let's go back to the Ford Sync. Okay, so we're back to the home screen. We can go into navigation here, which um, will give you a notice sometimes, but here you go. And again, like you can use this system. And if you wanna go back to the home screen, again, simple, just hit that home button, takes you right back. Navigation is pretty simple to use. You just tap and enter your destination. A lot of the stuff that Sync 4 has is very intuitive. It's pretty easy to navigate. But if you guys would like to see in-depth videos on each feature, let me know what you guys think and if you wanna see those in the future. Again, we can go back to the home screen. Look at the apps. So this is what your Ford apps are. So if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you typically will, won't use this screen unless you wanna access the Ford Pass app. But again, that's also on your phone. Uh, but this, this screen will just show you any mobile app that Ford Sync has to offer. And you can also find more apps there if you wanna look at what they have to offer and what options may interest you. Settings is pretty straightforward, but we will go through each setting just so you guys see what it's all about and you can make changes on your Bronco or just kind of know what the features are here. So of course, phone list, that's easy. That's how you look at what phones are, are available to connect to as well as add new phones. When you add a phone, you will click on that option. It will ask you for you to go on your cell phone. You're gonna go into your settings. You're going to go to the Bluetooth, find the Bronco and click on it it'll give you a number to match with the screen and then you'll hit pair on both your screen on your car and on your phone and it'll automatically pair your phone to the car again the bronco does have wireless android auto and apple carplay so you will not need to plug in your phone to do that now sync navigation that's exactly what it seems it's just your navigation options 
pretty easy. You click on that. It'll give you some different things that you can do with your navigation function in the car. And if you, if you use these features, these will only be changes that will apply to this setting here for nav. It will not apply to your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. To make changes on those, you're gonna have to go through CarPlay or on your cell phone. So keep those two separate. But you have some nice things here, including weather. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but typically you do look at that on your phone, but if you don't connect your phone, it's still available. Okay, so sound, this one's really good. So you have tone settings is essentially these three options. When you reset them, it puts them all in the middle. So the, what the middle is, some people might just think it's just some random thing, but it's not. It's actually what the manufacturer thinks that the best sound should be for your vehicle based on the sound system. I like to change it up just because I always like a little bit more bass, a little bit more treble than usual. Treble than usual. So I'd usually change those up uh, to be a little bit different, but of course, like depending on what you prefer, you might change those you know, down or up and do whatever you want with your tones and you can test different things out. I always love to, to change and mess with that on any new car I get to see what, what fits me best. Now, fade and balance, this is more so, if you don't know what this is, it's more so where do you want the sound to be best or, or most heard in the car, from my understanding. So right now we have it set in the middle too because we have typically don't have any passengers, but say that you are consistently having more than two people in the car, you could adjust that to be more towards the back or in the middle so that everyone's getting an equal amount of sound throughout the vehicle. Now, speed comp compensated volume, what this does, this is a great feature, I think, is that the, the, the faster you drive, it will account for the noise of, of you know the wind and all that, and it'll actually turn up and down the volume of uh, your music or what you're listening to to always remain the same uh, sound within your ears. So for example, if you hear a certain volume as you speed up, that volume will remain consistent of, so over what you're hearing, but it will change the volume of what you're hearing without displaying it. And then of course you have occupancy mode. I think uh, this just is, is, is letting the sound system know you know, if there's someone in every seat or if it's only just the driver, uh, you can change this however you want. We have it on all seats right now, but of course like you can change it to driver. The sound system sounds good either way, so that's just personal preference. Okay, so that's sound. So we go to vehicle. This will show you, let's click on it, um, different features. So let's start with the first one. You have the 30 minute idle. That means that this is on right now. That means that after 30 minutes of idling and not moving your car, your car will automatically shut off. But before it does so, you'll have a prompt on your screen, uh, on your cluster where I showed you guys before. It'll say car is shutting off. You can hit okay to keep it running. But if you don't and the bar runs out, it'll actually just shut off the car for you. So it's not just idling. Um, and then you have the rear occupant alert, which is just telling you, hey, when, um, you know, you get out of the car, check your rear seats, you make sure no one's in there, um, you know, lurking. So that's what rear occupant is. My key is a pretty neat feature. I'm not gonna register one, but I'm gonna explain it briefly what it is. So what you can do with my key is since you have more than one key, you can set one of the keys as being a my key, meaning that you can set certain limits to that key, say speed limit, um, things like that, that it, like for example, say you have a, a, you know, a kid that's starting to drive and you wanna set it so they can't go over 70 miles an hour in your car, you can then just set up a my key, put in those parameters, which is a pretty simple and straightforward setup, and you can see, you know, you can give your, your kid that key so they can't, you know, essentially drive faster than a certain speed or, or, you know, they can't do certain things with your car, right? So you can definitely set up a my key for that. But keep in mind, whatever key you set as my key, you cannot remove that key as a my key without using the other key that you own because one of the keys will have to remain an administrator key, which means that that's your personal key that has access to the system as a whole. So if you only have one key and you set it as a my key, you're gonna be stuck in my key and you're gonna have to go to the dealer and pay for them to unlock it. So make sure that one, you have two keys, two, you always leave one as an administrator key and you only use one for my key. And when you have to deactivate my key, you're gonna have to grab your administrator key, go in your vehicle and then delete the my key. So then the other uh, key will also become administrator as well. 
Okay, so that's uh, serial number. Um, that's just where you, you can find it, remote, uh, remote start setup. I think that we need to set this up because ours is not working, so that's how you set that up. Uh, Windows, I think it's uh, the remote open. You tap your key twice, I think it's the open button. You hold down on the second time, it'll automatically open your windows. Let me see if that explains it. Opens the window, moonroof, applicable remotely. So you, you can't roll them up, they'll only open. Then you have wipers if you want to set them on courtesy wipe, which is, uh, I love that word, courtesy wipe, because that just means when you get in your car, your wipers will go on once just to clear anything that's on them at the current time. You can leave that on or off, just personal preference. And then you have a rear wiper automatically turn on when you put your car in reverse if you have that, if you want to turn on that feature. And you have your lighting feature. This, what this does is um, it, you can either have your auto high beam on or off, daytime running lights, and then um, this, this delay here, which is for, it changes how long the lights stay on after you leave the vehicle. And then it'll you can change that or just have it off. Ambient lighting, which um, I wasn't even sure we had here. Apparently we do. It's just um, how bright or, or dim you want your ambient lighting. We're gonna have to mess with that at some point. And then your locks, what you want your car to do um, with uh, when you when you lock your car, like you want all your doors to unlock when you hit it once or twice, um, that kind of thing. And, and the nice thing is that every single thing in here has a definition so you can click on it and read what each of these little things does. That's it for vehicle settings. Clock, easy, set your time. General is going to be your language, temperature, whatever you like that in. You you want the beeping sound when you're going through your menu or not. I typically turn it off because it's annoying. Tire pressure, that kind of thing. And if you have to do a complete reset of sync. Display, um, this is pretty easy, but it's kind of cool. So what it allows you to do here is you can actually turn off your display if you just don't want it on and then turn it back on whenever you want. Um, but um, you can also put it on calm, which will just show the um, time, which you can just click to, to turn it back on. If you turn your display off here, the way you turn it on, I think, is you just click on it again. There you go. Brightness of your display. And then you have mode, which is like night or day mode. And you can either pick it or just leave it on auto. It'll just do it with depending on time and lighting. Connectivity, I think that's just your Wi-Fi. If you, um, let's see here. If you're, um, yep, your connected features, Bluetooth, wireless app protection, and managing Wi-Fi networks. I suggest you connect to your home Wi-Fi because uh, you can do on the air updates for your vehicle. So just make sure that you do that. So when you're home and your garage, manage Wi-Fi and add a network and make sure you connect to your home Wi-Fi. That's the hotspot option. Uh, if you have it, uh, which is you pay monthly, I think, uh, you can, that's where your options for your hotspot is. We do not have that feature, but if you're ever interested, I think you can go through Ford and get that. Um, then you have your mobile apps, which is again, same thing, just your, your settings uh, for your mobile apps. Um, if you wanna turn them on or off. Oop, I went home, okay. And then you have system updates, which again, connect to your Wi-Fi at home and uh, periodically check that um, and the, we're on automatic so it automatically just updates whenever we're in the garage uh, but we'll have to set up the Wi-Fi at some point Ford assistant is essentially your Ford Siri so what you can do is you can turn on right this and then select a wake word and when you say these words it'll automatically it just like when you do the you know um, Alexa or whatever you know, it'll automatically start listening and do whatever you ask for it. So say you say those words, I'm not gonna do it because it'll turn on, but say you say that and you say, take me home, it'll route you through your your, your sick nav home, right? Or hey, uh, say this word here and then call this person and it'll, it'll do that for you, which is pretty cool. And you have some other voice options in here as well. Then you have uh, some uh, Amazon Alexa is now actually a feature in uh, Ford Sync. I'm not gonna go through that now, but uh, you can set that up uh, and you can ask it to do different things uh, through Alexa, which is cool. Same, it's similar to Ford Assistant, but I think it might be a little bit better. Then you have the 911 Assist, of course, and Valet Mode. So what's nice about Valet Mode is you can click on it and say right now we were at a place, we could hit yes, set a pin and say we set that one two three four done now that locks your um car so you you so in case you have a a, a valet in here 
they cannot go through. So you hit done and now everything's locked. The valet cannot get into your screen or your information until that code is entered again. And once you get back in your car, you put your code in, hit done and it'll unlock your screen for you. Oh, and it's going on AM radio right now. Okay, so, so after the settings, the last option here is features. So that is just straight up the driver assistance and the owner's manual. This is going to be your lane keeping assist uh, or system pre-collision, brake assist warning, rear view camera, park aid on or off, blind, blind spot, park aid sensors, cross traffic alert and driver alert. Just pretty straightforward settings that you can edit through the features menu here. And again, everything has that eye icon, which will actually tell you what that does. And it'll show you a cool little image of everything. So make sure that anytime you have questions, you should click on that eye icon and it might answer all your questions. And if if not, then you can always go online, ask the questions in our video, or maybe just Google and see what uh, what you can find. But also in here, you have the owner's manual, which is awesome because you can look in there also if you have any questions that you need answered. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video about the Bronco. And if you did, or if you didn't, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to join the Couch Gang, and I'll catch you guys another time. Peace out.